and hello once more ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to another edition of the druids dozen yes my name's john uh some people call me the rock druid and i'm a bit of a dj i've got a couple of radio shows i do the sunday rock show on bcfm radio 93.2 fm in the bristol uk area and i also present the rock druid show on astro radio dot earth and occasionally do some live DJing etc although you know bookings for that these days with all this kind of lurgy virus around are few and far between but hey it'll come back again anyway the Druids dozen basically I have a large record collection I've acquired over many years and basically I just go and grab a dozen albums sort of at random and uh, wave me in front of the camera and chat about them for a few minutes each so I shall get my glasses on. I've got them to hand today. Thus, here we go. Very much so. And uh, I shall uh, pass straight in with this one. There we are. This is obviously Quiet Riot's classic album, Mental he Metal Health. There's the front. There's the back with all the quiet right boys looking very quiet right there. And no, there's nothing on the inner sleeve of this. Yeah, quiet right metal health from 1983. A classic. Now, um, quiet right have been going for years. I think in the mid 70s they started. Um, <clears throat> although this is their third album fourth album I think overall but anyway it's the 1983 album and it's the one that broke them um, primarily because on here there is a cover of Come On Feel The Noise The Slade a classic which overall is a pretty good version um, Come On Feel The Noise is one of those songs that you know it's unless you're Oasis it's really hard to screw up um, just a great rock and roll song i've even heard band, a sort of like folk bands do kind of chilled out versions of it which sounds quite ironic however quite right i give it the full-on metal treatment um and that was the kind of lead kind of uh um i know these guys have already been sort of like culty in the states but this was what broke them internationally worldwide and brought them to the uk audience's ears um the album came out not long after and bit of a corker to be honest with you uh tracks like breathless uh, run for cover battle axe let's go crazy thunderbird and of course the epic title track bang your head metal health will drive you crazy bang your head metal health will drive you mad absolute corker um the guys on the guys in uh, in the band here uh frankie uh carlos Cavazio's guitar work is superb. The legendary Kevin Dubrow, may he rest in peace on vocals. Amazing performance. Got a rhythm section of uh, Frankie B uh, Benali and Ruzi Sarzo, who I think Ruzi Sarzo played with Ozzy for a bit as well. But anyway, tight as a duck's bum. Um, classic album, iconic album cover, and uh, overall, just a corking record so uh yeah, kicking us off with something fairly well known and uh, absolutely brilliant quite right metal health highly recommended to all you metalheads it's a bit glam but on the other hand it's kind of on the acceptable side of glam it's not got any of that kind of poison or cinderella kind of cheese on it it's just a great metal album so yeah quite right metal health damn fine record go get go listen go love Okay, next up, we'll have this one, if you can see it. It's uh, an obscurity. This is Skeleton Farm by a band called Tunnel of Doubt. Yeah, there's the front. Get it wrong. Oops. Yeah, there's the back. Oh, 
as far as the disc is concerned, it just came as a blank disc. Fortunately, it has a, uh, you know, it came in the in this box, so um, I kind of I just kind of managed to write on it what it was. So 2006, this came out. So I was a pain in the arse when bands send you stuff, and sometimes if you don't, you just get a disc, no info, you can't play them. But anyway, these at least sent me the blank disc in the uh, in the box lot and uh, just the inside of the sleeve there which I'll take this out here so you can get a better look at the cover there we go and it's just a folded piece of paper there's nothing on the inside of that now I don't know that much about this lot over the course of years kind of the information has forgotten and just before I came on air or I just sort of recording I gave this lot of Google just to see if I could find any more information out than what I kind of can remember I can't they seem to have vanished off the net but what I can remember these are all Scottish I think these are a Glasgow band um, and as far as I'm aware the only thing they ever released so they said this was 2006 this came out uh, five, five track um, metal album sort of EP kind of thing uh, very much in the old New Haven British heavy metal style I mean this has got heavy kind of um, reminds me of bands like Witch Fiend and Witchfinder General Raven etc all, all the good stuff um uh, it's a couple of built in songs on here. The title track, Skeleton Farm, a bit of a classic. And there's also a song on here called Live Fast, Die Young. It's a title that a lot of people have done in the past, but uh, their kind of take on that kind of concept it's quite good. It's kind of speed metal almost, kind of, uh, but not but in a new over British heavy metal style, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, a pretty good album can't tell you much more about it this is kind of skewer uh, like i said i i spent a good 10 minutes having to google trying to find info on this um before i came on out i couldn't so uh the chances you find in the copy are going to be very slim but if you ever do encounter one grab it it's an interesting little kind of obscurity that deserves to be remembered and it serves as a kind of you now all of you guys out there that are in bands you know you may not be famous, you may not get huge, but if you leave something like this behind that occasionally someone will pick up and go, actually, I don't know who those guys were, but the music's pretty good, at least you've left something of a bit of a legacy behind you. So yeah, um, a, a, rare, a rare gem. Uh, Skeleton Farm by Tunnel of Doubt. Good stuff. Okay, next up, we'll have another bit of vinyl. And something like this. Yeah. This is Balls to the Wall by Accept. Also from 1983. Of course, there's the front. There's the back. And I don't think I've got anything on the in, on the inner sleeve here. No, no inner sleeve or anything. Now, what is there to say about this one? This is a great album. This is a cracker. Um, except classic German Teutonic metalheads. Um, uh, this is going back to the classic days of Erdo Dirk Schneider on vocals. Udo left a few years after this, but, um, you know, to me, you know, the current except vocalists, or the ones I've had since, have been quite good, but Udo's always been lead voice of except, as far as I'm concerned. Um, great album, this one. Little bit homoerotic, then, uh, maybe. I mean, let's look at the cover, for, for example, you know, um, and then you've got uh, cuts on here like London Leather Boys, um, etc. So, you know, 
I don't think any of it except one okay, game. Not really makes any difference, of course. But, you know, it's just that kind of playing with the homoerotic imagery. Um, something that Priest were doing from time, uh, at the time. Of course, obviously, Rob Halpern was gay and in the closet at the time. But, uh, you know, more power for the guy for coming out. But, um, <coughs> you know, I don't know if except were kind of exploring their own sexuality at the time. Or uh, just kind of... Um, you know, baiting or trolling as we'll call it now, I don't know, but who cares? It just makes for a kind of startlingly different image for a metal album cover. Anyway, um, going back to the album, it's pretty damn good. One of Except's best. Um, I've already mentioned London Leather Boys. The title cut, Balls to the Wall, still probably one of these seminal Except cuts. Get your balls to the wall, boys, etc. Um, other cuts, Head Over Heels, uh, losers and winners, winter dreams, guardians of the night. Everyone is a little bit of a Teutonic metal gem. Um, an album that still stands up well to this day. I still play this one for pleasure a great deal. And, uh, you know, again, add it to your collection. It's pretty good. And if you're not into, if you're not heard of Except, or not got into them, this is a damn fine place to start. Yeah, okay, that's Except, Balls to the Wall, from 1983. Great album. Okay, next up, come a bit more up to date. There we go. Uh, this is, uh, I think what the album's actually called. Shadow of the Gallows by Doomicidal. So there's the front. There is the back. Nothing of interest behind the disc, but there is the disc, should you be interested. And pop this out, here's the inner sleeve. So there's a better view of the of the album cover there. Just a gatefold with some lyrics. There's the back sleeve. Now, Doomicidal, a band out of Bath, and as you can probably guess with the name like Doomicidal. They play Doom Metal. These guys, they're kind of dark, they're sludgy, they're post-Sabbath, they're <coughs> um, a bit stonery. These, these guys are they're just pretty damn good. Um, formed around a bass player and vocalist, uh, is it Robert Dursley, Richard Dursley? Robert Densham, the uh, bass player and vocalist. A guy that's probably around about my age. Um, really nice geezer and a fantastic kind of um, a player, full stop. Uh, also on here you've got uh, Barney Clements on drums and uh, Migo Gage on lead guitar and lead vocals. Um, this is, let's say they're out of Bath, um, a few months ago my band Alien Staffing should have been doing a few gigs with these guys, well, not a tour as such but a few sort of gigs sort of up around the West Country but hey, Lurgy Virus has kind of put that under uh, the kibosh, we hope to reschedule for next year when we can play again but who cares, well I care but yeah, but anyway, um, this is just a great album by a great band. It's heavy, it's doomy. Um, cuts to look out for on here. You've got uh, Rats in the Wall, um, Murder Maids. Absolutely storming, epic cut, about nine minutes long. Um, it's intense, intense, heavy, heavy riffage. Um, Autumn, 
Hendwich is another great cut as well. Um, that one's a bit of a list of the favourite on my BCFM show. It always gets kind of good feedback whenever I give that one a spin. But yeah, um, these guys are still going. They got a, this is their only full length album. They have got a, at least one or two EPs out as well. And um, I think there was another album in the pipeline that may be coming out at some point. I shall have to give the guys a, a shout and find out. But anyway, um, available online. And, when, and probably available at their gigs again once we can get back to playing live. Anyway, Doomicidal, Shadow of the Gallows, belt in record, highly recommended. Okay, next up, gonna go new over British heavy metal. Here we go. Dump his rusty nuts somewhere in England. One of the early episodes I played looked at the um, uh, Rotten Nations EP and I said that I'll try and dig out this one for you I've got all the dumpies albums but you know this is the next one to come out the racks and uh, I'll pull this out out of this dust sleeve here if I can ah, got some stuff in the dust sleeve to show you in a minute anyway there's the front cover there's the back cover with dumpy himself um, along with Mark Bads, ex tank drummer there, and uh, Kerry Langford, who I think went on to play with the Lloyd Langton group, I'm not sure. Um, and then open this up. There's sort of pictures and logos, etc., engines and that kind of thing. And I did mention that I had some stuff in the dust leaf, and I'll get them out for you now. Two things of interest. Well, they're of interest to me. I don't know about you guys. First up, that is a back, uh, all access, all areas band pass for the police in Bristol, and uh, I have that because uh, that's my. Oh, when Don't Be Rusty Nuts did their 25th anniversary gig back in about 2000. Saw back to about 2005, my band Adrian stashed in with a support for a couple of dates, and uh, that was our hometown show where we played with DRN. Bit of a dream come true for me, and because uh, I've known Dumpy people on and off for years, lovely geezer, and uh, yeah, that's that. And um, going back from a few years before, there is my Dumpy's bum flashes patch. There's only one way you could get these, and that's jumping on stage with DRN and getting your ass out. Yeah, moon the audience, and uh, when you came off, you got handed one of them. I volunteered. Yeah, I was a big fan back in the day. Saw DRN live quite a few times. And more times I care to remember. <coughs> anyway, Dumpy's Rusty Nuts, a band that are currently on hiatus because Dumpy himself, uh, you know, health issues, etc., which is a bit of a shame because the guy's a legend and don't be rusty nuts absolutely one of the best most entertaining irreverent biker blues heavy rock bands you'll ever come across um this was their first full length album recorded at the fire station in oxford i think I think it was the old fire station in Oxford, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't actually say on the back here. No, I don't actually say... Uh, anyway, but so I've got a funny thing, it's sort of a place called the fire station in Oxford. Um, like, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the uh, in the comments, you know. I'm, I do like this memory, and my memory is not what it was. Anyway... This is one of the seminal New Over British Heavy Metal albums, one of the seminal New Over British Heavy Metal Blues live albums. It is a corker. From the opening cut, it's got to be blues right through to their cover of Route 66 and Wild, covers of Wild Thing Route 66 on the, um, the, uh, on the end. It's, it's a gem. And it lacks some of their live classics like, um, Hawkwind and Hot Lover, which uh, came off later albums. But, you know, woke up this morning, whole lot of blues, just for kicks. Um, okay, 
their version of I'm a Hog For You Baby maybe not exactly PC as far as these days are concerned um, but you know this was 1983 82 round about then let's drag one of the discs out see if it's got a date on it no no dates on the record but I think it's about 1983 um, so maybe 82 again correct me in the uh, correct me in the comments if, uh, if, if you want um, but if I am wrong but yeah absolutely built in album recording quality is fair it's better than their other live album, Firkin World Live, which is still a great record, but the recording quality lets it down a little bit. Um, <coughs> performance is very rough around the edges, but hey, that's what you got with Dumpy's Rusty Nuts. It's a, and this album's about capturing the live experience rather than being musically perfect. And, you know, Dumpy's Rusty Nuts were not a musically perfect band. But there again, they never set out to be. They were just a bunch of bikers that liked blues and heavy metal that wanted to go and entertain the people and have fun doing it, drink lots of beer and, yeah, just party. This album sums up what they were about perfectly. And, um, yeah, I will go as far as to say this is an all-time classic. Yeah, Dump is Rusty Nuts somewhere in England. Um... Don't know whether it's currently available on CD. You may have to, it has had a CD reissue, but um, whether it's still available or not, I don't know. Um, vinyl copies are now quite collectible, um, so you may have to hunt for it, but it's worth it. Believe me, this is worth it. Yeah, Dumpy's Rusty Nuts, somewhere in England, an all time classic. Let's get this back in its little house. Get in there. No, everyone's okay. Well, this is, is put up a fight, so I hope everyone's okay. And uh, the second wave of lockdowns ain't kind of affecting you too much, you know. But I suppose, as, as my missus was saying to me the other day, with all this lockdown stuff that's what the internet's for and good job we've got it because we've got the, we'll be climbing the wall me and the missus have been watching old box sets during lockdown you know currently re-watching the entire walking dead beginning to end yeah got to the bit where um they're on the episode we're watching tonight the big showdown between negan and uh, rick the last battle of hilltop whatever you call it great stuff which is completely irrelevant to this blog but it just saved me a bit of time while I put this gem back in its dust leaf. Okay, moving on. This is one that I've borrowed for this particular edition from the Mrs's collection. <coughs> yeah. Um, I have got this on vinyl, but I got this one uh, off the Mrs's collection because uh, this is the reissue, remastered, extended edition of this classic. This is, of course, Argus by Wishbone Ash. Uh, originally 19... God, 72, I think, something like 73. Anyway, there's the front, the iconic cover. There's the back. You can see it's one of the misses because she likes to keep the record cut at the record store. What do you call it? Uh, marking the catalogue stickers on the backs. Um, open it up. Yeah, it is 1972. And uh, you've got this fold out sleeve, massive amount of sleeve notes there for this reissue. There's the original album gate, and there's the what would have been the inner gatefold of the album. Now, Argus, classic uh, album by classic band, probably the seminal. Um, 
Wishbone Ash album. This is the one with all the famous tracks on it. This opens up with Time Was, Sometime World, Blowing Free, The King Will Come, Leaf and Stream, Warrior, and Throw Down the Sword. Um, that's the main bulk of the album. This reissue has got a uh, the Live from Memphis um, promo EP, which was a US um, radio station send out kind of live sampler with Jailbait, Pilgrim, and the Phoenix on it. Um, yeah, it's bonus tracks, which makes it, which is the reason why I'm waving this in front of you because it's got a, they've got the bonus EP as well. Um, yeah, but anyway, one of the seminal albums, um, of course, if you if you know your classic rock tracks like, uh, especially Blowing Free, still a kind of rock disco. When, when I do the occasional live set, uh, DJing and that kind of thing. You know, if you get the right audience in, Blowing Free is a guaranteed dance floor filler. Um, time was epic, epic cut. Um, about nine minutes long, kind of big kind of twin guitar prog stuff. Um, you know, uh, The King Will Come, Warrior, Throw Down the Sword, make a nice little trilogy of songs. Um, uh, yeah. Nothing more to say. Like I say, Wishbone Ash, this album is hugely influential. Um, I had the interview, privilege of interviewing Martin Turner from Wishbone Ash a few years ago, and uh, he was telling me that um, when they toured this album, a uh, certain Thin Lizzy was a support band, and uh, kind of um, Phil Linnett was very, very interested in the twin harmony guitar sounds. And within a couple, within a year or so, Thin Lizzy had, had a massive lineup change and incorporated the harmony twin guitar sounds. Another band that opened up for Wishbone Ash in the earlier days were Judas Priest, and um, you know, talking about 73, 74, and again, the members of Priest heard the Wishbone Ash guitar sound, the twin guitars, the harmony stuff, and you know, they incorporated that into their own style of metal. Yeah, overall, you know. The influence of this album cannot be underestimated, and it is a great album. Um, even though it's got tracks, all some of the Wishbone Ash kind of, you know, sort of blowing free, throw down the soul, King will come, warrior, songs that for some other bands I'll go, no, not again. Even blowing free, I still get a buzz every time I hear it, you know, and I've heard it millions of times, which is a sign of a true classic. Yeah, 1972, August, Wishbone Ash. Corking album, if it's not in your collection, why not? Okay, next up, we're going to stay CD and we're going to go Italian. This is uh, Into the Jail Without the Cage. Interesting title, um, pro uh, by Venus Mountains, Italian metal band. Now, um, the title of this one has always confuddled, confuddled me a bit. So there's the front. There's the back. Um, maybe it's kind of means something more in Italian, but it's lost something in translation. I don't know, but I'm not going to make a big issue of it because uh, it's a uh, great album. Um, I suspect it's the translation thing because, uh, yeah, it's mainly lyrics in it. And there's the Venus Mountain guys on the back. Because uh, I've met the Venus Mountain guys, I'm actually played with them a couple of times <coughs> yeah these guys first encountered them um, oh god got to be about 2009 2010 um which is roughly when this cd is from um when they came over to britain again it was alien stash team were on the same bill as these guys and uh yeah when they came back a year or two later they actually asked for us to open up for them again so uh uh, a couple of dates, so you know, I've played them a few times. Nice guys, absolute nutters. Um, 
just a corking record this one i think this is their debut album i've got another one by them as well around somewhere um i think these guys are still going and uh you know still laying down the thunder although i've not heard of them coming to britain for a couple of years um these guys are kind of uh i suppose sound wise going back to the first one we talked about the day kind of quiet right in that kind of vein um sort of like yeah kind of quite commercial but quite heavy and quite fun kind of pseudo glam metal be a good way of putting it um this is a great this one's a great album it's got their uh you know, tracks like crazy girl night of the fire broken legs um in the jail looking at the sky um on the road again fast work blue just tune after tune after tune that are absolute bangers so um yeah nothing much more to say about this it's just that this is a great record by a great band um you can say these guys are caught a cult sensation in in, uh, in italy um they are known outside italia but uh well not that well known but do yourself a favor check them out you may well like yeah uh into the jail without the cage venus mountains great stuff go have a quick gulp of fluid right next up gonna have an ep here we go budgie it swallowed do not induce vomiting from 1980. there's the front and there's the back nothing more else to say on here as you can say got it signed by a couple of the guys including the late great john thomas yeah because when i saw him on that when i particularly saw him uh, steve williams wasn't the drummer they were using uh John Simpson, the Magnum drummer, gig when I went to get this sign for some reason. <coughs> anyway, um, what probably put one of the least known budgie releases um, wasn't a big impact, at the, didn't make a big impact at the time. Um, uh, only had a digital reissue as bonus cuts on the uh, CD issue of uh, the Power Supply album um yeah quite obscure now this dates from a time when budgie were a band in transition they had uh yeah you know, they did all the classic the early 70s classic rock albums um yeah sort of like yeah uh, bandoliers the in for the kills all that kind of thing never turn your back on a friend you squawks did a couple of albums that were kind of a little bit softer slightly more commercial edged uh, as impeccable and um, if I were to I'll waive the rules then they went into a, a year or two of flux there was a time they had a few guitarists came and go including Pete Hunt that's now in uh, Anubis and a few others uh, came and went before settling on uh, old John Thomas there um, and uh, Kind of by this time, the new over British heavy metal was uh, beginning to take off, and Budgie were beginning to heavy up a bit. And this is the first of their pure metal era, the one, the out, the era that ran through until the band officially kind of went on long-term hiatus in about '84, '85. Um, only a four-tracker, not the greatest Budgie album or Budgie releases. In my opinion, there are two tracks on here that are great and two tracks on here that are a little bit meh. Um, kicks off with Wildfire, a track that divides Budgie fans lots. Some people hate it, others like me think it's an absolute corker. My own band, Alien Stashton, have covered Wildfire as a live kind of thing. We were going to um, record it for a, a tribute to Budgie album, but never got around to doing that. Um, I think the I think the project kind of folded. Um, maybe we should drag it out and do it, put it back in our live set. I don't know, but anyway, absolute belting little rock and roller. Um, 
it just kind of riff heavy head banger. Uh, the opening cut on the second side, Panzer Division Destroyed. Absolute classic track. Got a uh, got a riff to die for. Burke shared his wailing vocals. Um, uh, it's the one that kind of lays out, in my opinion, it's the track that lays out John Thomas's guitar style in great thing. He's not a flash all over the fretboard job. This John Thomas is a guy that will take a nice little arpeggio and lick, and then and then variate on it. He, um, it's not flash. It's not overly clever, uh, definitely, uh, but it's technical and it's just very, very listenable. And, and it's a very kind of almost unique style. I can't think of any other guitarist that kind of plays exactly like John Thomas does. So, how to John Thomas. Anyway, um, they're the good high points. The other two tracks, High School Girls, um, it's all right, as is Lies at the Final Cut, Lies of Jim, the E-type lover, uh, which is kind of a little kind of morality tale about a guy that kind of um, sort of like abuses women and loves his E-type jags and ends up in jail, basically. Yeah, not a brilliant track, but bear in mind at the time, this is a budgie that are kind of reforming, they're finding their feet, and the what is laid out on this album eventually explodes into a kind of brilliant reality on the power supply record that followed it up so yeah um if you want the if you want it as a standalone ep you're gonna have to track down a vinyl copy and again these are quite obscure hard to get hold of um you know you have to look at ebay and record collector to get your hands on a copy but um if you just want the tracks get the cd version of the power supply album and, the, and all the all four cuts on here are the bonus cuts so yeah budgie is swallowed do not induce vomiting 1980 a bit of a rare gem maybe for budgie fans only but worth it for two stunning songs yeah enjoy okay next up going cd This is Stereophonic Riff Apocalypse by Shepherd. Shepherd are an Indian metal band. Um, India's beginning to develop a real good metal scene lately. Um, last 10 years or so especially. Uh, it's always had one. The Indian have, have had met, India's had metal bands going back to the 80s. But over the last 10 years or so, you know, probably the, the band that kind of been flying the flag for it and the one that sort of kicked the door open was Sky Harbour. But in the wake of Sky Harbour coming through about 10 years ago, more and more Indian bands are coming through and begin to kind of get noticed in the West. And Shepherd are one of them. I'm not sure exactly where in India they're from. I want to say Mumbai. I may be wrong. See if there's any cues on this is the booklet by the way there's the front oh there's the gatefold of the digi pack thing whatever it's called there's the booklet there there's the uh it opens up artwork lyrics Bangalore. Well, that was where it was recorded anyway. There's your sleeve here. Yeah. Recorded in Bangalore at the uh, Area 51 studios. Now, these guys, three piece, again, coming back to the doomy sidle thing, three piece kind of doomy sludge metal. You've got uh, Namit Shadhan on guitar and vocals, uh, Bashir Michaels on, on the bass and vocals, and uh, Deepak Rangu on, on drums. Stunning band with a stunning record. Um, 
Uh, one of my colleagues at BCFM, a guy called Phil Vickery, uh, discovered Lee's and he said, oh yeah, I found this metal band you'll love. Put them on to me. Thanks, Phil. I'm glad you did. Because just a great, great band, great record. Um, it's heavy. It's intense. Um, let's have a look. You've got cuts like uh, Spite Pit. Um... Uh, crook. Oh, my favorite, one of my favorite album song titles of ever, the Black Cox of Armageddon. Yeah, uh, stereobathic, a uh, stereolithic riff apocalypse title cut as well. Bog slime, uh, wretch salad, stale bait. That's where these guys are coming from. Their doom, their death, slightly black maybe, but. Yes, 100% great, 100% metal, 100% Indian. And it's got a kind of slight Indian vibe to it as well. Um, some of the scales the guitarist uses, got that kind of, almost like a Hindi kind of slant to them, which makes kind of one of the things I love about world metal um, is when you get bands from places like India, um, sort of like Sub-Saharan Africa and that, that are kind of bringing in element. Uh, Mongolia is the classic example with their folk with the Mongolian folk metal movement, where bands are bringing in parts of their native culture and um, sort of like musical kind of background, and bring it in and put it into their, their into their metal. It kind of I don't know any other genre of music that can do that, jazz maybe, but anyway, it's what makes metal and hard rock, my opinion, the finest genre on earth. Yeah, so stereolithic riff. Of, Rith Rith Apocalypse by Shepherd. Corking record. Um, you may have to go and do some hunting to dig it out, but it's worth it if you do so. Go get. Okay, next up, we'll have one that wasn't a random grab. Because I'm... Uh, those of you know, um, last week we sadly lost uh, Lee Kerslake, the uh, Uriah Heap drummer for the Great Gig in the Sky. And in preparation for my show, which is going out tomorrow, as I record this, recording on a Saturday of the Sunday Rock Show on BCFM, preparing a sort of like little tribute feature for him. And uh, I'm gonna play the title, and part of it's gonna be involved playing the title cut of this. This is Uriah Heap's The Magician's Birthday from 1972 again. Yeah, there's the, actually I'll give it the, might as well do that. There's the full Roger Dean um, sleeve picture thing. There's the gatefold. Yeah, this is a this is an original pressing. Yeah, you're right, Heap, the magician's birthday. Um, <coughs> a great album by a great band. There's not much more to say about it, really. I actually need to drink, drink this out to get the... Uh, in a, I need to get the record out because it's one of these ones that annoyingly uh, has no uh, track listing on the sleeve of, of, the, of the vinyl. Um, so I'm going to have to have a look at the disc. Just in case you're interested. There's the disc. It's a black vinyl record. And all you young'uns, this is how we used to listen to music. And some of us still do. Now, Uriah Heap, from, from the from 1969, which is very heavy, very humble, their debut album. Right through to... Albums like Return to Fantasy, round about sort of 75, 76. Did a whole string of classic heavy progressive rock albums. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the Uriah Heap albums, with the possible exception of 1979's Conquest, are pretty damn good after that. It's just that they tended to lose the prog rock element and became more of a kind of heavy rock band. But the early stuff up until so the Return to Fantasy albums, strong prog rock vibe running through it. And, you know, I, 
I'm not going to be dismissive when I say uh, these the albums are much of a muchness, but they're in the similar kind of standard and quality. Um, you can't really pick a duff. There's not really a duff one on there. Most of them are sort of like without duff tracks. Um, take this one for example. You know, you've got the A side, which is uh, let's have a look. What's on here? Yeah, you got uh, it's sunrise it tracks like Sunrise, Spider Woman, Echoes in the Rain. So echoes in the dark and rain, blind eye. Nice big Hammond organ driven Mick Box soloing, uh, Mick Byron, Dave Byron wailing, Glee Kerslake and Trevor Boulder rocking. Oh, that's Gary Thane, not Trevor Boulder. Gary Thane, sorry. Pounding bass lines on here. Yeah, Trevor Boulder came a couple of albums after this, didn't he? Yeah, hard rock. Flip it over. Um, you've got Sweet Lorraine, which is a cut that's still in their life set to this day. Absolute belter. Um, Tales, I don't know, I can't remember that one off the top of my head. Maybe because it's sandwiched between Sweet Lorraine and The Magician's Birthday, I'll tend to forget it. But then you've got The Magician's Birthday, 10 minutes, great big epic prog rock kind of tale of a magician's birthday party. Um... Uh, Ken Hennessy, the keyboard player, writes on the inner sleeve, um, loosely based on the short story, what I wrote during uh, June, July this year, The Magician's Birthday is our fifth album. Um, it's, uh, uh, we do, we, again, we find ourselves saying it's our most important album, but all have been most important. We'll probably say that about the next one. Um, and it just goes on to say that they've been since they recorded Demons and Wizards, the previous one, they've been touring pretty hard. And, you know, I suppose, it, you know, musically and lyrically, this does make a kind of sequel album to Demons and Wizards. But, you know, it's just a great, it's just great. Let's so say, I'm playing this, I want to do the show next tomorrow. I am playing a, the title cut as a tribute to uh, um, Lee Kerslake. And, uh, yeah. One for, one for just bands of great music everywhere. 1972, Uriah Heap, The Magician's Birthday. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, next up. We're going to keep it prog. As I wave this one in front of the camera. This is Sinking Without You by Bristol Band at Jibo. Yeah, another one. Another band from my home area, my hometown. There's the front. There's the back. Pop it open. There's the inner sleeve. There's no booklet or anything just to fold out. Thing like this. There's the full fold out on the back. Now, Jibo, band that are uh, no longer with us unfortunately um this album came out in uh, when was it 2008 um they followed it up with uh another album 2011 with a slightly different lineup and then kind of i've not heard anything by them since and members of gbo are now playing with other bands so uh i presume gbo are no more but anyway, um, so yeah, they're kind of prog, almost like a super group. Um, uh, you've got Rob Allen on guitar, Jeff France on drums, James Hollywood on vocals, Laurie Jones on bass, Nick O'Neill on keyboards, all of which were kind of fairly well established um, members of other bands. Uh, James Hollywood used to play, oh, a complete brain fade. K Passa, Bristol kind of world type music band. But anyway, they've all been involved with various other Bristol bands over many years. Came together, did a couple of albums as Jibo. Um, <coughs> prog rock, very much in the kind of vein of bands like It Bites, IQ, etc. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Dan Fine, but they 
did quite well for themselves. They, um, including playing with the uh, being asked to support the Australian Pink Floyd show, um, including like cutting the cut the nights at the Royal Albert Hall where they did a um, a live EP. Um, just a really really good band. This album is pretty damn fine. Um, my favourite of their two studio albums, although the other one's got its moments, uh, you got this type things like the title cut Sinking Without You, tracks like Lighthouse, The Lancashire Lads, um, Nowhere Left to Hide. There's almost kind of like an anti war vibe running through this. Um, knowing some of the guys, that's not surprising because they're quite pacifistic in outlook. Um, although, not most albums, there's all, you know, you tend to find that a lot of albums have one cut that stands head and shoulders above everything else on here. And with this album, it's a cut called The Seventh Day. Um, yeah, it was, I was under the influence and under the cross when we proudly marched away to do my bit for God and, uh, for God and Man there on the seventh day. We marched up and down and conquered some towns and we all shine on and we all die young together. I can't remember the exact lyrics, but it's just a corking track. Um, can't think who plays the... Tr tell you who plays the guest trumpet on here? Yeah, a guy called Martin Harries. And uh, there's also a choir um, that joins in as, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the cut the seventh day. Um, and that trumpet solo that this guy plays is just makes this takes a great song and makes it special brings a lump in my throat every time i hear it i get quite emotional even talking about the song um now whether you could whether this album is still available again i don't know you might have to do some digging some hunting but uh believe me it's worth worth checking out if only for the track the seventh day but the rest of the album's damn good as well so jibo Sinking Without You. Corking record from a corking and sadly on hiatus band. Brings us to today's last one. And we're going to end up with a bit of a party, I think. Yeah, there's the front. This is, of course, We'll Bring the House Down by Slade from 1981. There's the back. don't think there's anything in here but I will point out this is on cheapskate records this is the original pressing like a reissued I believe on RCA <coughs> but this is the uh, cheapskate original um, now the story behind this album is a is a bit of a classic Slade By 1975, um, we're a spent force as far as being a uh, glam pop band are concerned. Although, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not meaning that disrespectfully, I love Slade. I've loved Slade since I was a little boy of about eight. I've been into Slade. Yeah, it would have been eight, yeah, eight, eight or nine. And um, the, uh, and I love their early 70s stuff, but by 75, the poppets had dried up. Um, their attempts at breaking in the States had failed. You know, punk had taken over the British scene and uh, there was no place for a load of old glam rockers from, uh, from Wolverhampton. And, uh, you know, they were even kind of contemplating calling it quits. They changed their name to the Dummies and uh, tried to re relaunch themselves as a kind of post-punk or new wave band without success. Then, uh, being reduced to playing at, at holiday camps and uh, working men's clubs, uh, come, 1980, come 1981, uh, they recorded this album. Ma again, managed to find themselves on a, get them, you know, the, the major label days were long since gone. I think they went from the Polydor to Barn onto a little local label cheapskate, you know, just to get stuff out there. Um, then, 1981, one Friday afternoon, 
uh, the organisers of the Reading Festival uh, rung up their management and said, uh, hey guys, um, Ozzy <coughs> uh, uh, Osbourne's pulled out. We need a replay. We need to reshuffle the bill. We've got a spare slot. I stayed interested. Please help. We're desperate. <coughs> and taking the um, uh, kind of probably the thesis that most kind of struggling musicians, myself included, will do: a gig is a gig is a gig. They said yes and went. The result is musical history. Slade went on mid-afternoon, ripped the place a new arsehole. Um, yeah, if you ever see any of the live footage or hear the live album that was recorded uh, recorded at the uh, Slade's Reading uh, 81 performance, you'll realise what an absolute stunning show these guys put on. Um, uh, all, um, all of a sudden, Slade were kind of back in business. Um, this album was reissued. The... Uh, title track will bring the house down suddenly found itself crashing into the uk singles charts getting them back on top of the pops for the first time in about seven years um you know it's just a corking album um every track on here is a bit of a co it's, it's slade if you know your, what slade sound like and i'm not talking about tracks like run run away and they're uh, what they call their quasi Celtic arm lighter wavers and something like that, the classic kind of Ed Bangy party moon stomp slate. Um, we'll bring the house down, night of salvation. The wheels ain't coming down about being stuck on a plane in with, 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 with an old DC3 with uh, undercarriage problems in the States. Um, when I'm dancing, I ain't fighting. Oh, cracking track. Dizzy Mama, my baby's got it, I'm a rocker. Every track on here is a bit of a belter. Um, yeah. Um, you know, this led the Slade's comeback. A string of great albums came after this, which I will double into at some point. But, yeah, but this is where it kind of all started all over again for the legendary Slade. 1981's We'll Bring the House Down. Again, one I recommend to be in any discerning music, uh, a sort of hard rock and metal heads record collection. Cracking record. Oh, well, so that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed. Um, again, if you want to give me feedback, comment, agree, disagree, give me your own experiences of the relevant records, the uh, comments are down there on Facebook. Uh, sorry, on YouTube. They're over there on Facebook. And... Um, yeah, and uh, if you want to subscribe so you know when I can, there's a notification bell apparently as well, but yeah, it's up to you. And uh, I'll put links to the radio shows down there and over there as well. And if you want to kind of tell your mates and spread the word, I'd appreciate it greatly. I'm not trying to do this channel for money or fame. It just started out as a way to keep in touch with just a few friends and, wait and talk about music. And uh, mainly it goes out on Facebook, but uh, I did the YouTube kind of uploads as a kind of bonus. And uh, yeah, a few people seem to be interested, so I kept them going. So, yeah, so that's it for this week. Um, until next week, peeps, stay safe, stay socially distant. Remember to keep your mask on when you go out. And I love you all. Bye. <laughs>